a number of kids with quite varied problems, some of them stemming from injuries, uh, others stemming from surgeries. So those are all problems that children can get into as well as adults. Children can have devastating peripheral nerve injuries. And the, the problem about that is that nobody sort of thinks to look for a peripheral nerve problem. around five, six, seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's not something that's a huge part of the, you know, my piriformix experience. But when you see one that has it, it's just as clear as when an adult has it. I mean, if you know what you're looking for. The injury that she sustained was the direct, that planted the seed for the development of the, of the nerve compression. And I think that's the case with most kids because they don't, they're not dealing with sort of the degenerative effects and some of the things that can cause nerve problems later in life. Everyone that I can think of had some kind of injury mechanism, whether it was like a fall, a sprained ankle, or some kind of surgical injury. So there was injury to the nerve during another type of surgery proce surgical procedure. I've seen a, a number of kids that have this sort of constellation of problems, including, you know, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Potts syndrome, and some other varied things that can go along with that. Those kids as a group seem to be more prone to developing a peripheral nerve injury. Like for example, if they were to sprain, have an inversion sprain of the ankle, they would probably be, they're probably a much higher likelihood of developing peripheral nerve compression injuries following that than a normal kid, for example. Sometimes children, especially if they're on the younger side, can have trouble you know, articulating exactly what they're experiencing. Medical professionals will tend to discount children more quickly because it's like, you know, it's a kid, nothing, there's nothing wrong, all the imaging's okay, kids don't have problems otherwise. So maybe they might jump to sort of some diagnosis like malingering or a secondary gain or the kid's just kind of seeking attention or whatever the case may be. The basic rule of thumb is, is if you've kind of gone through the typical you know diagnostic process that the medical system offers for pain and nobody has found any solution or really doesn't have a clue what's going on the odds are super high at that point that what you're dealing with is a peripheral nerve injury because it's the one thing that the system is not set up to identify or be able to treat There's a lot of laparoscopic surgery that gets done on children. I mean, there's children's hospitals that do a lot of surgery. And anytime you're doing surgery by a nerve, there's the possibility that you can injure the nerve. And especially with laparoscopic, because you're just blindly pushing these trocars through the abdominal wall. And you have no idea where those intercostal nerves are. And it's not even something you think about. Given the volume of laparoscopic surgery that occurs in young people for these kinds of various reasons, and also, you know, incisions for open surgeries, there's got to be a much higher percentage of kids that end up in chronic pain due to nerve injury than anyone recognizes.